Wie ist dein Gesicht? <lacht> Welcome to the presentation. Good morning. It's a very lovely day in Amsterdam. And uh, my name is Vasily Navratilis. I'm going to inform you and entertain you for the next 30 to 45 minutes. So, um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please do say them. Do not refrain, not stating them. And uh, we're, if you're wondering why there's a bottle of beer uh, on the display, it's uh, because that's the name of our project. It's an abbreviation for Blender Extended Expressive Rendering. And uh, what we want to achieve is to create something that's within Blender and that can render NPR. So, uh, what's this all about? We're going to explain. Uh, if you are thinking about uh, that it has any connection to alcoholic beverages, that's not the case. So, uh, but in two hours' time, the German language group will be meeting here. Maybe they have some light on this subject. <laughs> I heard uh, some Germans here, so <laughs> maybe some Oktoberfest activities. Oh. Now, because we are a project, I want to explain who we are. And to begin from right to left, uh, I begin with the evil genius. His name is uh, Bang Wee Kwang. And he is from uh, Malaysia. And here's our... So rendering. Now we begin with a statement: St styles are the end product. If you look at the end product from an artist, it's if you can, uh, it's very uh, nice. If you can say, oh, that's something from artist A or artist B or artist C. So that's why we want to use NPR. So, but if you want to use 3D, we you have to let go some way of thinking, some paradigms. So, uh, hence, we're going to explain why we have to change the th uh, this thinking. Now, this is not a render, it's a painting. It's displayed at the Rijksmuseum. That's a few minutes from this location. And it's uh, painted by uh, Willem Klaasson Heda. And it's 350 years BB, or before Blender. No idea how many bounces he used, no idea how many render time he used, maybe a month or so. So why are we complaining at, the, at this moment? So, but 
it was something that uh, shows in his time how close he was to getting to photorealism. So you can perceive this as real. Now the next picture is just uh, a few uh, hundred years ago is from Vincent van Gogh. He's displayed in, in Amsterdam as well. So go check it out. But if you look at the picture, so you cannot say it's real. Still, you uh, see it's a photo from a man. So the problem, if you look at 3D software, so it would be very difficult to uh, get a result like this. So, and that's what we are aiming for, to get something that's very unique and very, uh, yeah, well, artist-like. So NPR is not limited to tune or cell shading. That's a statement because many people think, oh, it's all, it has something to do with cartoons. No, that's not the case. It's more like expressive rendering or artistic rendering. Then hence, we define NPR as everything we see that is not photorealistic. Now, let's think about uh, that we are, what we see, if we do not know about Blender or anything, what we know, what we perceive in this world that is created with NPR. So, or is like NPR. What is around, already around us? Now I'm going to show you, for the first uh, example, video games. Ah, no sound. Oh, that's bad. So, <laughs> so this is Nino Kuni. And uh, you can, uh, this is made by Ghibli. So it's a video game, but it's very anime-like. Ah, the next one is Borderland 2. Oh, sorry. I just want to have this with sound. Sorry, a uh, small interruption. Uh, yeah, sound from the... Oh, that's my power supply, sorry. <laughs> sorry for this interruption. The cliffhanger. Yeah. No, it's only on my computer. That's the power supply. Sorry, I'm a, June, I'm a noob at pre presentations, but... It's about NPR rendering, but oh man, this is not good. Ah. Yeah. I will, I will uh, get it through the speaker. Sorry for this interruption. So, uh, well, this is Nino Kuni. So uh, this is made by uh, in cooperation with Ghibli, and you can see it's very anime-like, and hence it's very NPR. The next one is uh, Borderland 2. Well, you can see it's very expressive in its uh, rendering. So uh, it doesn't conceive as photorealistic. This is Okami. So uh, this is very uh, unrealistic as well.
And the next one is, uh, is uh, Team Fortress 2. Uh, the reason we, uh, we contain this video is because it's soft shaded and it's like the old Disney cartoons. I can tell you this is not realistic as well. I played this uh, game with my uh, 12 year old uh, boy and it doesn't play like this. Of course, we could have uh, contained many, many, many more uh, uh, video games, but it's just to show what is uh, where g video games are capable of. Now, the next thing, what's around us, what's made with 3D, are 3D anime or 3D movies. So, uh, and I'm not talking about Toy Story, and I'm not talking about uh, the cloudy with a patch of uh, meatballs. But I'm talking about things which are made to bad, not with Blender. This is, uh, ma this is Expelled from Paradise. It's a very new uh, movie which is going to show uh, in a few months' time. Characters are 3D as well. This is Knights from Sidonia. It has some resemblance to photorealistic, but uh, as well non photorealism. It's made by Polygon, it's, uh, and Polygon is in the next movie as well. This is a new anime from uh, Ghibli. It's called Ronya. There are mixed feelings about the shading. It's, uh, Yeah, it's very new. So, uh, the last one is Cyborg R009, as well made in 3D. Now, this is uh, from a French uh, company, uh, Goblins. It's a, a school for art. I wanted to include this because it's not anime and it's definitely NPR. It's very uh, nicely made. And um, oh, it's, uh, yeah, well, just enjoy. Now, we have uh, seen some examples which, is, which are made in other 3D software. Uh, but there are still around us a lot of uh, examples, like architectural. So they use it. Um, some architectural agencies use NPR for uh, stating their work because it looks like it's painted. The same goes for uh, commercials. People use them because it's a bit different for a car commercial to use something that's uh, made in NPR. This is Toyota, by the way. Now, and of course, there are traditional mediums. It's not 3D, but we uh, included it. And if you're wondering uh, why we have the fruits on the right side, it's Pitaroya. And Pitaroya is a red fruit that's used for ink. We had a long discussion about it. I just wanted to share you this information. And yeah, well, you can't use it, but it's something you have to know. Now, if you're wondering, so is Blender that so bad? No. Exactly. Uh, in fact, it's very good. Uh, there are a lot of NPR artists who use it to make uh, uh, movies, uh, renders, you name it. And just to show you them, we have uh, asked the community to create something in Blender and uh, to send it to us, and I make, uh, made a movie about it. Here it comes.
sir. Thank you. I think, I think the artists uh, appreciate this. Uh, so there are, there are better examples of NPR, but uh, these were the people who, uh, who acted on our uh, response or our call out. And uh, if you were wondering, yeah, well, I was uh, seeing some photorealism. Yeah, that's true, because recently we have uh, cycles with freestyle, and freestyle is definitely NPR. Uh, I'm not going to uh, mention uh, uh, much about freestyle, but uh, it's NPR as well, because uh, it creates non-photorealism. Now. We've seen a lot of uh, examples, and the question is, why should we use NPR? Well, uh, there's a simple reason for that. That's because of the speed of output and the distinctive styles, hence a unique identity for the artist. So we uh, contained uh, a picture from Andy Warhol, and everybody knows Andy Warhol, everybody knows about the soup. So if you see this picture, you know, ah, it's a wall. So the same thing goes for the Van Gogh picture or for a Monet. So, but can you uh, tell the difference about the Willem uh, Klaasson uh, Eda picture painting or a Rembrandt? Yeah, maybe because Rembrandt used lightning in a different way. It's more difficult to tell if something is uh, photorealistic for uh, who made it. And you could uh, ask yourself the same question about Pixar or DreamWorks uh, 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 movies. Or can you s say, oh, this is a typical Pixar or this is a typical DreamWorks uh, movie? I know you are very quiet. I know questions. So everything is very clear. All right. Now, so what is the Beer Project all about? Well, uh, because we are a project. We want to have a result, and the result is in a renderer engine within uh, Blender itself. So to get to this goal, goal uh, we have a, a statement. Uh, we want an inclusive rendering solution, so that's inside of Blender, that breaks rules. So we have to do something different that than is possible at this moment. We have to create a new paradigm or a new way of thinking. And it allows for an optimized workflow. Now, yesterday I heard something from Tom. He was talking about workflows. Everybody wants his or her workflow, but it has to fit some way into Blender for NPR or artistic rendering. Because we are a, a group, a small group, yes, but there's enough people in the world who are using it at the moment because I display that. Beer is not intended to replace BI nor cycles. Well, we are referring to the beer project. We have no name for the render itself. So BI or cycles is still going to be in Blender. We do not want to have it, to leave it. Now, we have some hurdles to come by. It's uh, sometimes difficult for NPR artists to get to the goal we want, to get this fantastic render and we oh we want to use this shader but it's very difficult all right why is it difficult what are the problems currently so well, uh, NPR limitations in photorealistic renders because it's aimed for photorealism so one of the things we uh, have problems with are nodes because uh, if you want to have a very good shader like halftone uh, you have or the X2 shader. We got on this uh, subject uh, uh, in a moment. But uh, if you want to have a specific shader, it it's very hard to come by. And uh, it's possible, yes, but uh, we have to do a lot. Now this is a typical uh, sample of uh, Toon, but it's much, much, much bigger. Or it is a Toon shader created by Tomo Ref. He did a very, very great uh, job, but uh, it takes a while to create such a thing uh, like this and uh, it's very uh, he made an excellent video explaining what he did but it's even uh, it's pretty hard to get into but it's all possible so that's what we are aiming for to uh, do in a maybe a different way now another thing 
that's uh, we feel as a, a limitation is the strict combined algorithms. Well, uh, because Blender uh, internal and cycles use a way to get from uh, what is put in into the shader in the material to what is the output at the render time. Now, uh, why is this a problem? Well, uh, because uh, for NPR, we maybe only have to use diffuse or glossy or transmission, and we don't need the rest. So it's taking bandwidth. So um, I've uh, written down. Uh, I've written down how the uh, Blender internal is functioning, and it's. If you want to have a Blender internal combine a pass, you, uh, you have to do diffuse multiply, multiplied by ambient occlusion, multiplied applied by shader, added to specular, added to emit, added to indirect lightning, multiplied by color, multiplied by intensity, color value, multiplied by a factor, added to quantity environmental added to uh, lightning and intensity, multiplied by color, multiplied by color value, added to refraction and added to reflection. Well, that's for us. There are a lot of stuff we do not need. So that's why we want to uh, focus on uh, something different. Now, and a uh, third uh, uh, thing we uh, really need, or we have, uh, there's uh, the compositor. Uh, MPI uses the compositor in a very good way, only it's sometimes slow. And uh, well, the question is, do we have to use the compositor at the compositor level, or should we use it at shader level? Well, that's a uh, second uh, or third question we have about using Blender at the moment. Now. So we have unique problems in BI, use nodes, but still use the basic UI. Settings are everywhere. Well, you can argue about that, but uh, it's sometimes so because there, uh, Blender exists for 10 years. Things are built because of a reason inside of it, inside of shaders. And well, sometimes it's not very logical why you should uh, take something uh, you have to uh, do something or, well, I don't know, to uh, use uh, the, the, the possibilities into the shader. And there are some limitations document in the beer proposal. I will get to that later. Now, for cycles, it's uh, uh, more trickier to use for NPR. Uh, like uh, we want a shadeless shader, that's not possible. Path tracing isn't power efficient for NPR workflow. Well, you could argue about that, but we feel it like this, uh, this way. And I've uh, done the half tone shader, with, which was made in cycles. I have a very good uh, power uh, uh, graphic card unit. It was very difficult. And the uh, NPR and primitives uh, were a bit uh, difficult as well. Toon shader, second tone is just value difference. Now. Artworks origin were from uh, 3D and the uh, styles expose them to have been done in Blender. Generic styles, hence Blender, which is a conflict with this uh, distinctive style, hence unique identity as seen. Now, let me explain. This is no BI or cycles bashing. So we are just viewing upon uh, our problems we have. Now, we have some solutions. That's, we want something to get to our goal. What is our goal? Well, it should be flexible, services, uh, 2D, 3D, artistic rendering output. It should be expandable. That means that we should, uh, if you want an, another shader or uh, something that's unique, you should, you, it, uh, it has to be very easy to add it. And it should have a fast workflow. So if you are going to create a shader, it should be very easy. So origins of the solution. Well, it started in 2012. It's, uh, there was a big a threat on uh, Blender Artist. And there was a call out for, uh, from Lee Passi and from uh, Bang Wee Kwang 
to uh, to ask people, well, we want to have an NPR stuff into Blender. How can we do it? These are the limitations, but we want to have everything uh, from shaders. So uh, the shaders, I'm gonna, uh, the shaders are uh, oh, not functioning. Well, the shaders, we have some shaders. I'm gonna, uh, I can't, oh, it, the screen isn't working. It's too bad. But I will uh, say, well, what kind of shaders do you want to have inside of Blender? Well, uh, of course, cell tune. Now, that's already in there. But we want to have uh, additions for any animation. Uh, we want to have uh, control over the normals. Now, we know that there is a project currently ongoing, which is uh, f focusing on normals. But another problem we face is gradation control. Radiation control is like, oh, I want to have uh, a high dependent radiation. That's a pretty difficult uh, thing to accomplish at the moment. Now, light color and shadow, uh, we want to have more, we want to have so, uh, soft cell tune shaders like in Disney uh, animation. Um, and of course, uh, watercolor shaders. That's very difficult at the moment. And shaders that are expressing like it's painted. Now, to get to our, the core of our uh, thing, we think uh, should be the solution, uh, we have uh, what makes beer awesome for NPR, real-time preview. That means what you see is what you get. So if you are creating a shader, it should be visible on your screen. So, so what you see on your screen should be the output for, of the render. Uh, of course, we ought a better work, workflow, but that's the, where we think that a layer shader system would be the solution to, the, uh, to this. Because if you look at Photoshop or GIMP, they use this as well, and they are pretty uh, non-photorealistic, or photorealistic, it depends on how you use Photoshop. But uh, that's something we are thinking about. Similar rendered result as preview, I told you that flexible, so uh, you have only used the part of the shader you want to use. Uh, animating the shader, that's uh, if you have an animation, it could change and the ease of adding a new shader. Now, we have defined something uh, for, that's for what we have to uh, use in our uh, render. And we have a, a video demonstration of how we think the render should be uh, made. And I'm gonna explain you and let you uh, notice what we are doing. Ah. Now, this is the bear demo. Uh, this is uh, the beer bot. It's made by McLellan, and it's going to explain what we are visu uh, visualizing and how to use the render layers. On the left, you see which uh, uh, primitives we are using. On the right, you see what we are modifying on the primitives. So uh, in this way, we use uh, uh, shadeless. We're gonna use the 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 the, the uh, uh, diffuse. And we're gonna build the beer bot in something that is uh, usable for us and is not for photorealistic. Well, uh, to get to the left side, we use the, the primitives. What are primitives? Well, we have like a primitive could be a shadeless uh, shader. It's like a base color. Or it could be light dependent, is illuminated color diffuse. Or it could be view dependent because if you look at a shader in your screen, it has to, uh, well, you, you can uh, only show the view uh, from viewpoint. A view and lighting dependent, it gives the highlights and the specularities. And of course, we have some screen space shaders like the halftone. Now, well, we see, uh, see the halftone displays, uh, displayed in a moment. It's hatching, 
that uh, are uh, like it's uh, drawn by uh, a pen or a pencil. Color grading, no, well, uh, I was talking about that. Ah, here you see the half tone on the, on the head. And we want to have custom shaders as well. So like uh, using depth or using few depth or using a key shader or using the height of the shader. Well, most things are in the uh, in notes as well, but we have a, a much broader uh, perspective of how you can use it. Okay, so that this was how we vi uh, visualized how we could use the uh, the the, the blend new Blender renderer. Okay, well. So how beer differs from BI in cycles? Now well, render passes, we do not use render passes. Render passes are made in the, sh uh, in the shaders uh, itself. Compositor input, so that's at sometimes we can put a compositor input at the shader le level. It may not have notes because we are gonna make shaders. If you are questioning about, yeah, but why don't you use notes? Well, we explained it. But to make uh, a sidestep, Cinema 4D is using uh, uh, layers as well for its photorealistic shaders. Well, if that's good or not, I do not know, but uh, we are going uh, this route. Shader setup method is uh, faster and it's, okay. it's easier to explain, easier to say which shader it should be. It should be very easy to copy one shader which you already made to a new shader and just add something or subtract, uh, subtract something. Lightning management should be easy and world screen effects should be easy. The way forward, well, uh, we talked about products, we talked about market demand, we talked about artists, so, but we still have developers and development opportunity. Uh, in any project, well, they're mostly the, one of the uh, most important people. So, so how are we gonna go to our goal? Well, at the moment, we have uh, already def uh, defined some development targets. And the first thing we wanna do is proof of concept. That means uh, a null render and a an UI mockups. We are, at this moment, we are already uh, starting with the UI. Uh, which is uh, made in Python to see if everything is okay and to see if everything is work working. But we are also gonna make the null render and we are, uh, the null render is in fact the real renderer. To uh, what we are thinking about is using the OpenGL which currently uh, or uh, which is uh, to come into Blender. So there's a, an, uh, there's a side project going on, that's a viewport project. And the viewport project is very, uh, very important for us because if you want to have what you see is what you get, well, <laughs> you should have the viewport project. But something not everybody knows is the uh, OpenGL renderer is already inside Blender. There's already a functionality for it. So we're gonna see what we are gonna get and how far we gonna get. So, but uh, we are calling out to others because uh, we're, this, our interest is the same as the game uh, engine developers. I believe they want the same things like us. They want to have a higher level of OpenGR, uh, OpenGL and they want to have to see what, what you see is what you get as well. Uh, and involve more of the development community in general. Well, uh, I explained to you that the, uh, we have a, a fund, a small fund at the moment, because the, the Blender NPR org organization is uh, selling freestyle courses, and the, re uh, the reason is we want to get this project funded, so when we get from Python to uh, programming in C or C++, so we can do it on a higher level, uh, instead of uh, still staying in uh, in Python. Of course, you could get around that by making an external render, but we don't want it external, we want it internal. 
Nou, so this is uh, uh, this is a call for actions. Uh, we are already started, but uh, we are really want we ho we are hoping that people will get on our bandwagon and will uh, get uh, onto our project which are related to uh, us or will uh, buy some more freestyle courses so we will uh, be able to fund it uh, later on that's very crucial but we are definitely calling out to others please join our project and of course the grand summary Bear is the project for an all inclusive rendering solution in Blender we, you can find us at blendernpr.org, the blendernpr Twitter account, the beer.blendernpr.org, and the Facebook group. That's very special because we use that for freestyle as well. So we have a lot of discussions going on there, but uh, we have a, an own project site at the moment, which we are using to uh, get better interaction between project members. Now, and of course, there is a beer, bot uh, beer podcast, which is done by Li Passi and uh, Bang Wei Kuang, which uh, explains, uh, uh, yeah, well, where we are at uh, the current project. And this is the end. So, 99 bottles of, bottles of beer on the wall. Well, I don't want to count to 98, 97, 96. But if there are any questions, Please do stay them. <laughs> Is this everything? It's no questions? Was it that clear? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Does it work? It works? Okay, so so the question is, did you consider like using open shading language and node presets for cycles? Yeah. And what was the issues with, with, with this approach for, for your goals and things like this? The reason is because uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> I have a loud voice. I don't need a mic. So, um, the reason was uh, because uh, what I stated Cycles is not uh, something you can use for NPR because you even can get a, a base shading. It's a, a shadeless shader. It's like full color, no diffuse, no AO, no, no nothing. It Was this be, your question? It, or? It, it should be possible in open shading language, I believe. And yeah, well, we, also, we have no. uh, been uh, uh, looking at uh, the open shading language as well, but it's, uh, not everything is possible. Trust me on this, and uh, it's f even the open shading language is difficult to use. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, there are, we will work on like node presets and stuff like this, and I believe it should help in some point for your project as well. And also, like projects like Uber Shader, yeah, but, uh, all, all, all this should have been like. Let me saved your tell you time. that. Yeah. If, if you are there is a uh, if you uh, Google on half tone shader that's made in cycles and if you gonna fire it up in cycles it takes a few minutes to render so and that's a problem we want to have speed of output and the speed of output is because we uh, we think and we believe that this is very usable for uh, small startups on uh, the internet uh, which are uh, small animation startups which are going to use uh, this solution to create some uh, animation with it so yes we have looked at uh, cycles but please do join uh, the our discussion and uh, prove that we are wrong well I, i'm not saying that you're wrong just like <laughs> throwing ideas you know yeah but, but that's that's the main point we want a solution and the solution is creating something with NPR. Yeah. And if there is a good solution, why shouldn't we use it? Yeah. No? <laughs> I, I, I mean, we can like, discuss later about this and some technical details of this. Thing. 
Yeah. Maybe improve standard in Blender. I'm not saying that it's useless or so, it's just like maybe you can improve Blender itself to make life easier for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. But Maybe I can uh, say something too. I, I really am a big fan of uh, for NPR in general, or manga, cartoon, everything. Uh, I think uh, the Beat yeah. Project has a lot of good aspects because you have to think about how do you make good editors and, and tools for artists to make content. But what I'm having a problem with is to put it so separately. But I don't see it as a separate thing. If you look at uh, yesterday's screening of the Susanas, it was a complete range between a uh, traditional, almost realistic uh, computer graphics up to a uh, cartoon style or to a paper style or all the other yep. styles you want. I think it's essential that Blender gives artists a tool to make what they have in mind. And I don't want to put artist in a box like oh you do photorealism so you have to be here or you do uh, non-photorealism so you have to be there it's a it's a scale it's a gliding scale that goes from one to another and it's maybe even a multi-dimensional scale because you can do many ways which you can apply computer graphics call so for actions we're yeah, calling so out have, yeah so you have real time 3d you have CLSL, you have uh, game engines you have rendering you have cycles you have freestyle so you have a number of tools yeah and i think your proposal is not so much about npr the proposal is about to get a shader system which is as a design based on making very efficient cartoon style films yeah that's it this is no. fun this so is great. Uh, no, but that's a specific workflow and i want to help people to build workflows in blender it's not so, only, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but it's not only for the workflow alone. It's for the easiness of creating the shader itself. So, and of course, but if you talk to shader artists, they will yeah. always want to have easier ways to create shaders. And I think every sure. shader artist will agree on ha having better tools to do it. That you need less nodes or less buttons and less interfaces to do it. And your question is not a different one than the other ones. So putting it so separately makes your case very weak, because your case is not separate. This is also our problem, right? That's, the that's why we are still coming out. versus the rest of the world. So we're not against, no, because we, uh, we are not against the world. We are the world. And uh, we want to get the world <laughs> talking with the world. So that's why I'm standing here, and that's why I want to call out for doing this together. But uh, I had this discussion before on uh, yeah, yeah. the forums, and uh, I didn't talk to you, but I talked to no. one of the others. I know. And what I think That's we should do together is yeah. to set steps, especially to look at, okay, we have Blender internal, we have cycles, we have the shaders, we have materials, we have the viewport project. Mm. How do we design tools in Blender? How do we extend things in a way that all the artists will be able to use it, from the game artist to NPR artist to manga artist to uh, researchers exactly. to uh, architects. They should be able to use it. Uh, and that is not beer. That's not the, a. The beer is the project name. It's, uh, in, so you said that you want to have it inclusive. But well, the inclusive method is by helping the viewport project. Yeah. And not that's say. Exactly. Oh, you want the but viewport. that's our view no. as well. No. Only we want to get in touch. So, and that's why we uh, want to start after this uh, presentation. This but is the starting a, point to get in touch with the rest of the community in Blender. But it's not a we, that is the, the viewport project, which yeah. is an open project, you can join that. And you so, can join that as individual, as you, yeah. as uh, Vasily, or as another developer, True. or as cartoon artist. But that's what I rather see. Of course, it's, it's good that you say, well, we want to have more uh, NPR features in Blender, but it feels like as if you say, no, we have our own ideas and we want to uh, realize it. This is fine too, but then you should decide to make your own renderer. And say, well, we put a, a new renderer design in Blender, which uh, is next Is it new? Question, is it cycles. new? Hmm? It's in fact not, n uh, not that new because there's already an OpenGL render inside of Blender. 
The only thing that's new is the way we want to use the UI and to create the shaders to use in OpenGL rendering. So it's not that I'm new. It's already in Blender. I don't, I don't say this, but I mean uh, conceptually you can put it as a choice for yeah. artists. And I'm not against that. I said that's what it might be more clear. Then you say, well, we have the interface for Blender. You can set, say, I'm going to do cycle stuff or I'm going to do Blender internal stuff or I'm going to do uh, NPR beer stuff. And then you can say, well, we design it the way we want it. And then we try to make it optimal for our usage. Yeah. That's what True. You propose. So, but, 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 that's, <laughs> but that's not inclusive, that is exclusive. Right? Yeah. So that means that you try to make it optimal. And I'm not against it, I say, but it's a, a matter We of always can make it exclusive, but we don't want to. We believe that it's a very good addition to make something out of Blender that is widely used in mostly Asian countries, but is not in it at this moment. If you're looking at NPR solutions and what I showed, not made in Blender, and we want to have it made in Blender, of course, there are a lot of steps to cover uh, to get to this point because it's not having only the functionality but like I told it's having courses to explaining how to use it it's like having freestyle it has a fantastic uh, a fantastic a fantastic new opportunity to use the strokes marvelous but how many renders have you seen which have been made by it now that's something we want to, uh, we, we, we do not want to. So we know there's a demand for this. There are a lot of, many people are just use it, want to use it for NPR rendering. And we show this with uh, the, uh, the small movie we made for the Blender uh, community. So there is a demand. And if there is a demand, can we use it? Yes or no? Will it give addition to a Blender? Yes or no? Yes, it definitely will give an addition. And yes, we want to get into a higher level of industry and on a higher level of artistic re uh, users. I want to challenge the people who can uh, make a Van Gogh render using Cycles or a Blender internal. So uh, if it can be created in OSL, please. So uh, I challenge you to create something like that. Yes, it can be done, but is it easy, yes or no? No, not so easy because you have to use textures. No. Okay. But there is also no beer code, so you cannot prove that you can do it in beer either. So it's not about that. It's about trying to get... Not yet. Bit. Yes, but uh, I mean, if... if if I wouldn't have cycles in Blender and somebody would make a presentation, say, ah, I want to have cycles in Blender and we have a great plan and stuff and we're going to crowdfund it and stuff, I would say, well, I first want to see it. So what Brecht did was he coded the thing and said, look, this is what we could have. And then people say, oh, wow, right? So I, I really wish you the success and the luck you, you need, but you should start getting coding. Get the code, we get coders, yeah, and, and, and we make, are. make that prototype. We are. And then people will say, wow, that's it, now we get it. Right? Yes, uh, and that's the, the same uh, road which Freestyle traveled as well. It started outside Blender as a separate project and see where we are uh, nowadays. Everybody is happy to have Freestyle. But where, where is beer? I can't... Ah, that is not ah, you said so we are coding, but where is it? Beer is starting at the moment, and that's why we are calling out okay. because we want to have this, uh, this, this, this communication. This we want to get not. Uh, I, let me say, <laughs> visualize it. What I want to do with beer? I want don't I don't want to have beer here. I want to have beer here. Uh, in fact, this. <laughs> want me to make it. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, I want to make it together. So. We, we, I'm 
course, we will make sure that uh, those things can be compatible, but our project is going on, and the viewport project is going on, so you can look at it and make sure that those things that happen in the projects align with your ideas. But I think what you should reach out is within your user community is find the developers who really get this idea, because it is a, a different idea, and I think you should have the space to realize it. But take that space, but you cannot expect that to happen uh, by talking about it. No, 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 no. And that's I can't make that's it very happen. clear. Uh, but cannot... uh, and uh, we are not expecting like uh, somebody's waving with its uh, magical wand, and then it's happened. That's not. But it will be a, a long road, and we know this. But we gonna uh, travel along this road, and we wanna not do this alone, not by ourselves, but with the others. But that's why I, I propose to find out if there is an intermediate way where you can say, well, you can still have your own space and take it whatever you want, because that's your freedom, but we want to move on with Blender internal, and we want to move on with the viewport project. So what are the small things we could do to make sure that NPR artists are still happy Blender users? And that's what interests me more at this moment than uh, making a project which is more for the mid or the long term. What are you proposing to get in touch with the people who care? It's, uh, how can we go, go, uh, get together? It's, uh, on IRC or do well, we have to... There is a Blender and PR mailing list. Yeah, but we are going to use that, uh, that, uh, this as well. Instead of talking about this project, I would rather talk about yeah. what can we fix in Blender internal? What can we add? What can we fix better node shaders or a layer editor? Or what kind of little steps we can make to make their lives easier? Well, those steps are feasible. That's what we can start Bl tomorrow. Right? Fixing Blender internal is uh, going in depth in programming in C. And what we are currently doing is programming in Python which is f much, much more uh, easier than using the OpenGL render or... Uh, well, it's, it's more difficult. I've uh, looked at the code, how Blender internal was created, and it's daunting. It's very, it's f very more difficult. But that's what, but uh, render coding is not easy. You need coders who understand this level. Anyway, we can talk about it all, all right. day. So I want to okay. give the microphone to one other person, or maybe it's already 11, or? Uh, because uh, about the developers, I mean, I got the impression that, that you had the problem of finding a developer for this project. Is that correct? Uh, yes and no. We can find uh, developers, but uh, they're often paid. So, yeah, okay. uh, and that's normal. Everybody has to pay its uh, bills as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, um, have you have you already found the person that will do it as soon as the twenty thousand are raised or the no. twenty five percent? <laughs> we have uh, currently twenty five hundred. It's uh, US dollars raised. Uh, that's displayed on the um, uh, on the Blender NPR dot org uh, organization. Uh, what we, wh why we want to do it in Python, because you can't say, oh, this is the functional design, this is the technical design, go program. So uh, it doesn't work at, uh, in this way as well. So that's why we want to have something in Python which we can show to a coder, oh, this is what we want. Can you make it m uh, more easier? Can you make it more sexier? So, uh, but. Um, uh, if you, uh, if we want to get more funding, well, we have to think about other ways to get it funded. Because, of course, we can go to Uncle Tom, but uh, I don't know. He can't <laughs> wave with his wand either, and has a lot of money. So we have to see so where we can find and uh, find each other. But everybody is welcome on the project to think about it and uh, to get along with it. All right. <laughs> Was this, does yeah. this answer your question? So, um, to sum it up, basically you haven't found a programmer yet. You're, you're trying to get the money, I realized that. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, right. currently I am, I, I was just uh, telling to Ton, well, I am uh, looking into the code, there are others, but uh, I don't have that much experience in C or Python. But still, I'm listening to what Ton says, and I'm an artist, but I'm starting with coding. So uh, 
And that's, I think, the way to, uh, if you want to achieve something, you have to get your hands dirty. And I'm willing to make my hands dirty, and others are as well. All right? I mean, the, in, in Blender, we also have the Luxrender project, there's Mitsu Barrender, and people are, there's a talk today for V-Ray, and there's other uh, Octane. They're all render projects that use Blender and prove that it really can work. So it's not a bad idea to look at that way to, uh, to work right. with it. Okay. Ah. Hello. Um, um, have you seen the screening yesterday for the Susan Award? No, like I haven't because I couldn't. Uh, it, it wasn't on the live stream. Uh. Uh, uh, if you look at the, the movies that were made with Cycles, they are incredible. And there's uh, yeah. nearly no limitations that you have from an artistic point of view. And uh, you can do m many, um, you can do your oil effect in the compositor. If you know how to do it, you, you put some time in it. And you can do everything with Python. There is no need Even to C++ or uh, to... Watercolor to shader is extremely, di extremely difficult. Um, if you if you want, uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm an artist myself and I, I would need a shadeless uh, system in cycles. Um, but there's probably much easier ways to do it, like uh, write a little plugin and then, um, yeah, build the, the freestyle that is built into Blender right now. It's amazing. Yeah. And, um, but uh, it's much easier to improve it step by step. And I cannot see the, the sense in beer 2 because it's just another word for NPR, which is uh, rendering, by the way. Um, it's, uh, it's never really realistic. <laughs> but, um, True. And we want to use a, so a, f a photorealistic engine. If to we have do a separate not project, photorealistic uh, uh, things. If you collect money and do a separate project, um, um, the whole movement loses some speed. Um, if we put the, uh, the energy into the development of the existing technique, it will be much better for everyone. That's a possibility, but the existing techniques are, uh, are there you. as well. We have to wrap it up. All right. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are you living you're living in Holland, right? But you're going back to I am living in Horgen. Pearl Southern Holland. Yeah. You live there all the time for a long time. Yeah. Ah, so I'm just Dutch. Came I'm born in uh,